Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Aspiring Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Hamza Chowdhury. It is uh, Thursday, June 10th, 2021. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Uh, for some of you guys who are new to this channel, what I like to do a lot of times is I just go over strategies, trades that I'm working on, a lot of stock tickers that we cover on this channel frequently. And so what we do in the daily recap is just see how some of those theses are performing, um, some tips and tricks if I have some for you. And uh, with that said, guys, as always, I appreciate your support. If you can smash that like button, we're a 100% free content channel and really just generate uh, our support from you guys um, who, you know, come and watch this channel every day. I appreciate you. I appreciate the comments that you leave for us. And uh, again, as always, guys, I wish you the best of luck trading. Um, and so it's just starting off with Apple today. I was actually looking at buying put for tomorrow and the reason why is I'm going to go ahead and start off here on my daily chart which I know we talked about is preferable is this this move right here and you can see I had this alert right buy puts 128 for tomorrow and so I had this alert waiting to, for Apple to get to the one um, to the 50 day as a resistance level and it didn't quite get there it got there just about a little over 128 and so I should have started a position I didn't and I wanted to buy puts. And so what does that mean? It means when I buy puts here, right? Obviously now that Apple has gone down, those puts have gone a lot. And so if you look at the value of options for puts expiring tomorrow in the AM, those were going for about 25 cents. And at the end of the day, they were going for close to close, close to a dollar. And so you have four times your money on a single trade, uh, very low risk uh, because they're pretty cheap. Uh, they're running about essentially $25 a piece in the morning. And so this was a trade I missed. I was really disappointed, but you can see um, the Apple weakness has been the 50 days, been the resistance, but we've also gotten bounces off the 20 day. And I mentioned to you guys in my last video that I actually bought some call options here and sold them into the strength here into the 20 day. Okay. And so with that said, guys, again, for tomorrow, I expect that Apple will, will essentially trade above the, the close above the 20 day. So 126 is my price target for tomorrow for Apple. And so I will look and see what opportunities present themselves potentially also to, to get involved. Okay. And that might be involved selling puts uh, in the money. Um, Ford, I did short Ford today. It is a new ticker that we haven't covered on this channel. You can see that we've had this ultimate weakness uh, these last few days. And so what's interesting about Ford was I actually uh, shorted uh, first thing a little bit in the morning in the pre-market and you can see that if I, you know, you essentially got squeezed. And so I kind of knew what they were doing. You can see that this, this tends to flush in the mornings. And so what I did here is I basically risked up to here and I got stopped out at, at 1571 and then they squeezed it up to 1578. Now look at this next candle, okay? It completely closed that gap. And so when I saw the weakness, I got back in the trade here and I basically missed the ultimate flush down here to the 1520s, but I was able to essentially uh, re redeem some, um, some of my losses in, in this trade here. And so again, you know, here's the fast moving SMA line. You can see the stock was trading below it most of the day. And so when a stock holds below that, it clearly shows some type of weakness. And like I mentioned before is, you know, since we've had this upper Bollinger band, this, this weakness has been kind of coming in, but you know, it's still technically really bullish. It's still on the upper side. And so it's taken definitely a break. Um, and it's been, you know, really sort of stair climbing slowly down. I mean, this high up here is 1645 and the low today is 1518. So we're talking about a buck 50. And so it doesn't really move a whole lot. It's not that exciting of a stock, but it does have a lot of liquidity, liquidity which is nice because you can get in and out of the trade pretty quick. Um, CCIV, uh, I was short biased. Um, one of the things that I do want to talk about when I get to Clove is a good risk management. Um, I want to talk about a one of sort of a, a loss that I took recently and then how I've been playing it recently on 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 the, the way down. And so for CCIV, same same idea, guys. You can see it got gapped up here, um, but clearly there was some some issues here um, dating back from yesterday around 26.77. And so I had a, a sort of a stop here uh, when I was shorting at this pre-market high around 26.50. I think I got in right, right, right below that at 26.40. And so you can see we had a really good flush down here. And then of course it had a, a previous bounce and support level down here back at 2530 and then one back here which is where it retested down here okay and so a lot of times guys it's hard to bottom tick and top tick and so you have to give your trade you know 10 15 25 cents whatever stop you feel is appropriate depending on the the, the way it moves and so you see here 
you could have ultimately you know covered down here but that you know this to me was a flush it wasn't like it consolidated down at this level so to get that again that's great but i, I missed the meat of the move on that piece and so i was covering right up here um around the 20 low north of 25 okay um, amc has always been a great one it's been my biggest winner uh, probably even for the year uh, just in general i've been just really good at at trading the stock Again, just a lot of liquidity, guys. I mean, we're talking about three, four hundred, five hundred million shares in certain days. Uh, I think it's definitely slowing down a little bit, but it's still uh, easy to get in and out. And we talked about in our last video, again, clear top here if you're going to go for a long at $60. And then I mentioned here, uh, looking at the breakdown um, around under 50. And so that's what we got. And so I've been short biased on the stock. And so you can see, again, the fast moving SMA line. You can see that there's a constant rejection of that line. And so we're just downtrending slowly on this stock. And so I've been just shorting it um, pretty much all the way through. I've pretty much been shorting it. I think I did some long positions in the early movement uh, oh, back in here. But since then, I've been short biased on the stock. As you can see, it's sort of retreating from its highs. Okay. Um, space, SPCE. Ended up getting into pre-market trade, uh, full size, which I typically don't do. Um, but I noticed that the 3417 was the pre-market low, um, but I already knew it got beat down. And the reason why I want to talk about this setup specifically is I was expecting a gap fill here on SPCE back here. If you look here, there is a gap fill here at around 41, 42, which we've talked about, you know, back here when we were covering it more frequently. And so what was interesting about um, about this trade was I thought that was going to come yesterday. And so I actually ended up getting along yesterday and then I ended up getting stopped out. But today I ended up getting even a better price entry here, which I felt was, you know, a steal because we had support here around 3480. So I got in at 3480 and you can see this massive jump. And so it was instantly up a dollar. Obviously, I didn't hold on. I typically don't hold on to shares that long, especially in the pre-market. Um, but it ended up giving a dollar um, before kind of coming back in. And so this was a solid trade. You can see it squeezed everybody out who was sh maybe short from the stock. And then it just retraced all the way back into pre-market lows. And so that, I thought that was kind of an interesting play. Uh, I ended up taking the long here and then I ended up taking a short here. And then I believe I shorted maybe one more time down here. Uh, but these were scalp moves back here. Okay. The ultimate move was definitely here. Did not obviously expect a full retracement. But it was a great, 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 uh, you know, scalp trade for on the short side. Uh, Clover, guys, I will do a separate video on this just because it is a very important topic. I do want to talk about risk management. I do want to talk about not blowing your account. Um, solid stock for me. I've, I've, we've talked about this. We, you know, we, we've been trading this for, for, for quite a while, both on the long side and then, of course, on the short side. And so you can see here. You know, shorting into this was my second biggest winner on Monday. And then, of course, I had some shares that I didn't cover. And, of course, I paid the price for it ultimately. And I do want to do a separate video, so I don't want to talk about it too much. But, again, guys, you can clearly see, you know, shorts are winning this battle. And so you can see that this 14 level held really well today. And so if I go today and I look, this is the flush that I was looking for. And so I ended up uh playing both sides uh yesterday i played uh this bottom here at, at post market at 15 uh, 80 it was like 16 and i ended up selling here for a buck around 17.30 and so i ended up getting a little over a buck yesterday at the post market which was an awesome move and then you can see here that the algos pushed this thing up to the pre-market high which was around 18 close to 19 and then they just sold this off about five points guys and so this was a quite the, the short um, again, if you can hold on to the media move, great. Now you start doing these sort of, you know, back and forth. But what was really interesting was I thought this was going to break. You can see we tested this level right here at $14 so many times. And so I got short here only to get squeezed out. And then, of course, what I did is stop loss, right? You're this top right here at 1427, have your stop. Now you can come back up here and squeeze, you know, when it gets squeezed and then, and then reshort. And so you can see that it kind of, you're able to scout plays, you know, 20 cents uh, between these um, candles. And then, of course, it, it, it actually just in the post market, it just sort of did a move right now um, where it's getting back to that 14. And so we know where this thing wants to go, but there's buyers, guys. There's buyers buying this thing up and, and trapping shorts. And this was a short trap. And that's what what it did. It, it squeezed me out as well. I was part of that. Um, but like I said, I will do a separate video on that. I did short right yesterday um, just on this move, this massive move. I was a little early. I was over here, um, but you can see that it had a lot of strength um, on the chart. And so it's been it's been a, a solid stock. I did short it back at the 200 day originally thinking we were going to break. 
uh, we didn't so I did have to stop out and took a loss on this trade uh, but then you can see this quick flush here when Bitcoin tanked back to 30,000 a couple days ago and then it just rebounded significantly and actually ended up making new highs and so this was a good flush of, of potential buyers and then having you know getting back to new highs and so you know again I'm I'm more short on the cryptocurrency stuff I know most of you guys probably don't like to hear that but you know we posted about Bitcoin we were right about it and so I think I have the right to, to be able to say that um, and so you know again a lot of people were trapped uh, and you know this was something that was you know trading up in the 78 80 bucks and so are we stair stepping down right um, it looks like we are um, and so you know again we just have this sort of uh, stair step okay and so I know there's some bounces in there but ultimately that's that's how I see these stocks okay and so we have the 200 day and ultimately we could potentially break that um, wish I did trade wish today um, I had saw the short yesterday I missed the move I didn't get involved I actually have a good trade setup for you guys who are interested in learning more about covered calls and so what I did is knowing that, you know, we have these key levels here around $10, a little over $10. I ended up buying some shares closer to like 1075, I think. I, I could care less about the price that I got involved with because it was somewhere in the tens. Uh, the bigger picture item is that your calls for next uh, Friday, which is a week from now, are actually going for a buck. And so uh, up at the 1250, okay? So if you were to get the $10 calls right now, they were going for like north of a buck 50, buck 60. And so for 1250, that basically means that if, if, if Wish closes above 1250 next Friday, uh, the 18th, uh, I basically get three points away from my stock, um, you know, that profit plus the, the buck that I got paid for each call. And so that's potentially worth, you know, three and a half, uh, four points. And so it's a great trade. Um, the risk is, is that uh, Wish continues to tank uh, back here, back to the nine area and I'm bag holding, but I got paid uh, to hold on to those shares. I still got premium. And so again, doing the covered call options, guys, great strategy, great way to, to secure your, your stocks and, and shares and make, make some money while holding on to them. And so, you know, again, best case, you know, four points uh, and I get my shares and I get a bunch of, you know, um, you know, profit. Uh, worst case is I get to keep my call um, premium and I, I just hold on to the shares. And again, I don't mind holding on to, to something that's clearly, you know, been beaten down down here, similar to Clover and all these other stocks. Um, I did short some, a little chewy after hours. I won't talk about that. That's not going to really apply till, till tomorrow. Um, I did want to talk real quickly. I know some of you guys might have mentioned AI. And so I did want to talk about AI briefly. Um, just because it had uh, it's had a great move and and today it, it did sort of tank back um, but you know back here you know and so I got rid of a lot of my shares here realizing that we were clearly you know sort of peaking at 77 and then you can see that the earnings came out and we had we really never had a retracement since then and so we sort of retraced from 58 to 77 and so a lot of times guys that's why you got to cut some of your shares into into you know strength because the last thing you want to do is not sell here and now you're $20 less, right? And so there's more shares on the market. The lockup period happened. And so with AI, you know, there's more shares on the market to trade. Um, and so again, once you get these beat downs, what are you doing, right? We're, we're buying low, we're selling on strength. And then what, what are we doing? You know, we're selling half or whatever, and then we're buying on dips. And so definitely anything under $60 to me is an absolute steal. Keep in mind, the stock did come out, um, debuted on the market around 90 plus dollars. And so, yes, it was only a $42 stock, but it debuted at $90. And so ultimately that's where it wants to be. Otherwise you're going to piss off a lot of shareholders. Okay. And so if you're AI long guys, I, I actually have half of my position now left. And so I'm just holding on, waiting for a, a bigger move. And of course I could have sold here. Um, but like I said, I decided to, to actually, I sold most of my position and I added, um, on some of these dips. And so that's how I'm playing AI. And so with that said, guys, as always, appreciate your support. I hope this video was useful. Like I said, I will do a video on one of my um, sort of biggest losses I've ever had in my trading career. And I will post that hopefully soon. And I also still have that pro trader that I mentioned to you guys a couple weeks ago that I will do an interview with. I uh, just moved and I'm sort of still settling in. And so we will be getting that stuff out for you guys. As always, I appreciate you and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.